So we're beginning a new series looking at Philippians. We're going to go through Philippians verse by verse. Paul writes Philippians as a friend to his friends. He gets on very well with the Philippians and they get on well with him. And he is talking about some of his friends who he is recommending that the Philippians copy and help. So what we have in Philippians is what's called by scholars a chiasm. And a chiasm is a literary device or it's a way of uh, remembering things. It's also a uh, way of emphasising certain things. And it's like you're going up a mountain. So if you went uh, for a walk and you arrived at the car park and then you walked up into the foothills and then you found somewhere to camp and then the next day you found a really nice view and uh, then you got to the top, on your journey back you would encounter all the um, places that I've mentioned in reverse order. Your first place would be the nice view and then you'd go back down to where you camped and then there would be the foothills and then the car park. And a chiasm is like that. It's a journey uh, to something and a journey back and the same ideas get repeated on the journey back or addressed in a different way on the journey back. And the most important idea is in the middle. It's like the summit. And in Philippians, we will find that being like some of the apostolic figures who helped Paul is what Paul is going to recommend to them. Right uh, at the beginning, we have uh, this verse, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all God's people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons. Uh, now, Timothy is one of those servants who has served Paul, probably in very practical ways, and he is probably uh, reflecting what we read of the tradition of those who help um, closely someone who has leadership. Perhaps we're reading, we can read in here the behaviour of Elisha and Elijah. Now we hear that Elisha poured water on the hands of Elijah, but that's not all he did, but it was his willingness to serve that placed him in a position close enough to Elisha to see what's going on with him and to ultimately acquire uh, twice his anointing. And we find that the Bible tells us double the stories and that Elisha has double the uh, anointing and double the ability to do what God asks him to do. And so going through a period of serving someone who's a bit older and a bit more experienced is actually about getting hold of everything that they have and more. So we shouldn't really look down on that. And we might even want to think to ourselves, is that something we should do? Should we find someone more experienced uh, to serve in what they're doing, to understand what it is that they're doing? And that's what mentoring is like. It might apply to your church life and spiritual life. It might even apply to your work life, that you need to identify people who have the skills that you want and find ways of helping them so that you can see exactly what they're doing. So Timothy and Paul are servants of Christ Jesus and they're writing to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi. And what happens when we read this is we can see that Paul has a reason to write to Philippi and it's based at a certain point in history. It's very particular. It's to do with the circumstances at that moment. And yet at the same time when God was um, moving Paul to write to Philippi, there's a sense in which this letter is also from the Lord to us now. And so as we engage with this letter, we will hear from God for our own situation as well as experiencing and joining in with Paul's letter writing to Philippi. So that's something to bear in mind as things go on. Paul writes to the overseers and deacons, those who have responsibility, and um, it's very likely that one of them will read this letter out to everyone, and that's what will be happening, how the Philippians will be engaging with it. It's a very friendly letter from one uh, friend to another, and we too are included in on that journey as friends with God. So I'm going to read it once more. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all God's 
holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons. Lord Jesus, help us to hear from you as we go through this, um, this book together, verse by verse. Thank you that you had us in mind when this was written. And uh, we want to hear you. Hi, Barney here. So we're looking at verse 2 of chapter 1 of the letter to Philippians. It says this, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I said in the last episode that this um, letter is a chiasm, which means that it's split up into sections and then we revisit those sections in the second half of the letter in reverse order. So section A, as I've called it, is Philippians 1, 1 and 2, but the corresponding section is at the end of the letter and it's chapter 4, 21 to 23. And both sections are about greeting, they're about uh, all the saints sending greetings and all the saints in another place receiving those greetings and grace being available and peace being available. And so in this uh, verse 2, grace yes. and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a sense in which the writer believes that their sending of greetings has real power. So uh, we read often of the, uh, the number of occasions uh, in the New Testament of believers being instructed to offer one another a holy kiss. And the holy kiss uh, was, a, was something that was significant uh, in that it demonstrated brotherhood. And in the breath of the one kissing... Uh, is a ministry of the Spirit, of the um, Spirit of God from one to another. Now, we don't tend to do that. Sometimes we shake hands, but um, we, uh, um, we might hug one another. Um, but we probably don't offer one another a kiss of peace right now. Um, but nonetheless, there are other ways of signifying that commitment to one another so that when Paul and Timothy Timothy say grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ they believe that they have the power to release grace and peace and we all have the power to release grace and peace to one another and we know where it comes and we from. know where it comes, it comes from, from God our comes Father from and the Lord Jesus Christ but what is it so grace is well um, I was taught it was well, God's was riches at Christ's expense so what God makes available to us in Christ so that we can be free people, no longer subject to sin, no longer living a life of sin, but redeemed and holy and making ourselves available to follow Christ in every part of our life. So uh, Paul and Timothy have received grace and the power of grace is available to them and he and he speaks it out, they speak it out to the Philippians, believing that uh, the power of grace can be spoken and received. And then what is peace? Well, shalom is all things as they should be everywhere. So it's not just a lack of conflict. It's going much deeper to the root of the matter that everything was created for a purpose and should be in a particular state and if it is not then peace has not yet come and Paul and Timothy wish peace they wish all things as they should be as they were determined to be by God in creation Paul and Timothy wish that for the Philippians and they believe that they have the power to release a deeper level of peace and a deeper level of grace to the Philippians so we are also then in a place our greetings are powerful and they acknowledge that we're in Christ and they acknowledge the people we greet are in Christ and there is a reality of uh, blessing that comes from us to whoever we want to bless. 
Now, I would recommend, therefore, that you consider what words of blessing you can release, both to believers and those who are not believers. Are there ways, are there ways in which you can make it clear that you want to bless people and you want to, to release a ministry, release uh, a um, deposit of grace and peace to grace. Let's think about that. And finally, finally, we have here we in have this here. verse that it's from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So not quite a Trinitarian um, formula, but certainly a Binitarian formula in which we have here the sense of the co-equality of the Father and Christ. Uh, and Paul and is Paul very clear where grace and peace comes from, and we can come across other more Trinitarian uh, blessings that have the Holy Spirit in uh, the mix too. So I'm going to read it one more so, time and then I'm going to pray. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we want to receive grace and peace. We want to receive the fullness of your grace, everything that you want to make available to us that we can uh, be forgiven and follow you and the fullness of peace, all things as they should be. Lord, help us to pray and ask for the fullness of all things as they should be and cooperate with you as we pray, bringing heaven to earth. And Lord, we thank you that grace and peace comes from you, Father, and you, Lord Jesus. And we ask for more and help us to be like you in releasing grace and peace to others. In Jesus' name.